Hello, this is your daily devotion for Friday, October 22nd, and our reading this morning comes to us from Luke, the 18th chapter, beginning with the 9th verse. To some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This is one of those rare parables of Jesus that utterly and completely explains itself. Jesus is presenting two characters to us here. A Pharisee, a man who exceeded in his keeping of the law, who recites a list of things he does not do and of things he does do. And everything he does not do is a thing he should not do. And everything he does do is a thing that he ought to do. And then along comes a tax collector, the lowest of the low a man with a license to steal. He could ask people for however much he wanted in taxes. All he had to pay the Romans was what they allotted to him. Anything extra he collected, he could keep. Tax collectors were despised because it was known that they were doing nothing more than robbing their own fellow citizens blind and enriching themselves while claiming to only represent the empire. Tax collectors were wealthy people and they tended to live like wealthy people in the sense of being rather dissolute and free with their money. In that society in particular, money was power. Well, this tax collector knows that he's done a lot of wrong. And so he doesn't even look God in the face when he prays, unlike the Pharisee. He simply asks for mercy. And Jesus says that this one, the tax collector, is the one who goes home justified, put right with God, rather than the Pharisee who has done everything right and nothing wrong. And Jesus warns us not to exalt ourselves so that, so that we might be humbled, but rather to humble ourselves so that we might be exalted. The parable perfectly explain, explains itself. Jesus is laying out two examples for us to follow. And he says quite clearly, if you're going to be like one of these two people, it is better to be like the Pharisee, who acknowledges his sinfulness before God and understands that what he needs is not praise, not honor, not respect, but mercy. Rather than the Pharisee, who, in the guise of being thankful to God, can only talk about himself, all the good he does do, and all the evil he does not do. Jesus says quite clearly, this will get you nowhere with God. Because while it is true that everything the Pharisee did was something he ought to do, and everything he did not do was something he should have avoided, all those things are the least that God expects us to do. Not the most, the least. The Pharisee is not exceptional. He is just who God wants him to be. But he claims to be better than the other person. Yet God is not great on a curve. All this is good. All this is right. We can hear this parable and fully understand that Jesus is telling us to be more like the tax collector and less like the Pharisee. Now fast forward one week. The same two men come back to the temple. The same two men pray the same two prayers. The Pharisee being thankful that he's good and the tax collector asking for mercy. Now this time, who goes home justified? If we are to take Jesus at his word, and I don't know why we wouldn't, then it is, once again, the tax collector who goes home justified. So how come is it that instead of the Pharisee becoming more like the tax collector, in the sense that he needs to recognize that his own works don't merit him salvation, they're just the least that God expects anyone to do, why do we insist 
that the tax collector should become more like the Pharisee. We want him to come back having improved, having gotten better in some way. But what if he doesn't? What if he comes back and says, I'm still a miserable sinner? Well, then he's right. And he's still justified. Yeah, he's probably doing things he should not be doing. And probably not doing things he should be doing. But he knows it. And that is the real power of this parable. That God can do so much more with a sinner who knows he or she is a sinner than God can do with a saint who thinks he or she is not a sinner, but actually is. You don't get credit for doing the least that was expected of you because it was already expected of you. What puts us right with God is acknowledging not how close we get to the mark, but how far we fall from it. Not how little grace we need, but how much. If you're going to be like one of the two people in this parable, be like the tax collector and not the Pharisee. Always be ready to admit that, yeah, you probably could be better. And God will fill in the gaps. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the example of the tax collector and the Pharisee and pray that we would not draw the wrong lesson from the story. But rather, humility is not something we express once, only so that we can build up in our minds a reason why we ought to be exalted. But rather teach us to humble ourselves and stay humble, and to understand that we really aren't better than other people just because we do the least that is expected of us. Help us instead to understand how much we need your grace and need your mercy, and how we should never take them for granted, but should always be deeply, deeply thankful for the forgiveness and reconciliation you offer us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again soon.